Tanya, welcome to the podcast. Buddy is a temple. I'm so excited that we meet <laughs> here in Mexico in person. Awesome. For this recording. And we're going to talk about rising a collective consciousness and vibration. But I want to start for like a little bit of how it all started in your life um, to uh, open this path in front of you and start to walk to this path. Um, absolutely. Thank you for asking. That's a good question. Good place to start. <laughs> Um, I own a business and so I've been an entrepreneur most of my life. I took entrepreneurship grade 11 and 12 in high school, which gave me the opportunity to realize this is about me and what I can do. So I'm really only ever competing with myself per se. And I eventually was led to running a painting business, which I bootstrapped from the very beginning from nothing up until a multi-million dollar company. And I hit a point in that where I could no longer do it the way I was doing it. And so the common denominator was me. <laughs> and then realizing that, ah, it's me that has to shift. So I found a coach to work with, a business coach. And in doing their program, you also get a master coach with them. And so that master coach would work with me one-on-one. -on -one. And I had an aha moment one day when I just kept saying, I'm so busy. Like, I'm just so busy, I can't think straight. I'm so busy, I can't focus. And he's like, your brain's just giving you what you're asking for. So you're creating a reality. And it was like, oh, I need to retrain my brain. <laughs> so I actually went down on a path because in between coaching sessions, I'm like, oh no, I need more information now. And so I went to um, online and started looking how to retrain my brain. I came across uh, Marissa Pierce, who's a hypnotherapist and uh, did one of her programs through Mind Valley, and then I ended up going to a Mind Valley event, becoming a Mind Valley Master Certified Trainer, and hosting events and teaching people um, how to become better versions of themselves. And within probably it was about a year when I went to one of their really big events, and I went, oh, I see what's going on. And you could once you see through a, it's like seeing behind the curtain of the wizard. Once you see behind, it's like, oh, this is everyone's telling their hero's journey and saying, come be like me, except I don't want to be like anybody else. I just want to be me and be the best version of myself. And so I decided to create Adventures for Connection about first getting people to realize, getting to know themselves best, what makes you tick, what makes you happy, realizing that you are in control as an energy being. It is up to you to... Um, create your reality, train your brain, uh, make different decisions, have a new perspective. And through that we've done online, we are creating courses, and we do live events. We did a retreat in Egypt, which was really beautiful to connect people together. We've got one coming up in Greece uh, on a flotilla because after Egypt, several of us went to Greece to check it out based on my daughter whispering in my ear for two weeks about Greece. And I said, fine. And I'm like, oh, the only way to see Greece is by boat. <laughs> so we found a, a bit of a deal because we were in the off season. And so we did that. And so creating these experiences, and even that's why I'm here in Mexico now. So part of it is to have my energy. I've been called to come here, guided to come here and bring my energy to certain temples to help shift those temples and anybody that I run into per se, um, that is meant to connect there. And then the other is to connect for retreat space here and to be able to bring people here and, and just help them become a better version of themselves. Because realistically, I'm guiding people. I'm not telling people what to do. It is up to them to do the work. And so you, you brought yourself to where you are now, only you can get yourself out of it. You can't rely on an outside source. That is, in my opinion, part of the challenge of what's going on in this world right now is that we're indoctrinated as children to be a specific way. and we're programmed, our subconscious is programmed to behave a specific way. So you have to rewrite that subconscious programming. And I have done a coaching program on reprogramming your subconscious, so it's helpful. Yes, thank you. And one of the things I wanted to ask more about and also confirm that um, working with you and Adventures for Connection is that you call yourself a guide and you are, uh, you have this ability to pull the best out of people, you know, and guide them towards that. So I want to dive in this a little bit uh, deeper, like um, how do you create this space for that? What kind of tools do you use? Like mm -hmm. um, what people can expect working with you um, and what's the path to like really 
find all the best pieces inside and, and bring them to the surface and realize that this is the true power of everyone, their uniqueness. Yeah, absolutely. Another excellent question. So as we're growing up as children, we're very open. We're very, we're in theta. We're in this beautiful space of being free and just playing. And so I often invite people to go back to what were you like as a child? What did you love? For me, I'll use myself as an example because that's the best example I have, um, is I used to love, so my girlfriend of uh, one age had all these mannequin horses and like everything, like thousands of dollars of this set up. And I would love to go and organize it all and set it up. And then it was like, well, I don't want to play. I just want to set it up. <laughs> and so I have this ability to be able to uh, articulate and uh, arc use architecture uh, not just energetically, but also uh, functionally, so to speak, to to help pull that out of people, to let them be open enough. And sometimes we utilize plant medicine to get people out of their head as a bridge. It's not something that I recommend you go into and then you become, oh, I'm a plant medicine person and I'm going to keep going and keep going. You want to be able to use it as a bridge and integrate. And then you can bridge again and up level and integrate. And so as you do this, you actually have more ahas about yourself. When somebody is holding space and allowing you to go through something and then asking the right questions afterwards or going to a sound bath and saying the right frequency, the right words to get people to hear it in a different way so they accept it differently, that realizing the power is within them to change and only within them. Your parents, my mom and dad could not control me whatsoever. There was no hope in hell, but that is who I am. I came in in this lifetime with this really grounded being, with this frequency of my voice to use as a gift to activate others, to want to know more and to realize they have also their own gifts within and to find those gifts and unpack them and unwrap them and show them off for the world to see so that they can become the best version of themselves. <laughs> yes, thank you. So I want to um, ask about two potentially people who are listening to us first of all entrepreneurs like you who are maybe get to the same point that they yes. feel successful in their work but they're a little bit of feeling of the formal like something is missing maybe a purpose a legacy a vocation um how they can like um what they where, where they should start that's their journey and what should they do yeah, absolutely. We do free discovery calls, so that's always one of the best ways and another excellent question. Um, we've just been discussing this morning, actually, about leading the leaders. And so what does being a leader mean? It means that you're willing to stand out from the herd and do things differently, to stand in your power and to lead differently, even if there are naysayers trying to take you off, so to speak, or pull you back down. You're willing to stand in your power and with specific tools and daily habits and rituals per se, things like meditation, frequency, grounding, um, practicing what your purpose is and figuring it out, but then like practicing it, speaking it, saying it, manifesting it, because everything you say, do, and think, you are actually manifesting your reality here in this world. Mm -hmm. And for people who are maybe feeling stuck in their life, maybe experiencing some issue related to work or money or health, um, how what's the difference working with them and like how how do you like recommend them to start their journey? Yeah, um, absolutely. Most of the time, there will be something that triggers them, and every trigger is an opportunity to work on something within you. So whatever triggers you is an opportunity for you to reflect on yourself. Why did that trigger me? You are responsible for how you react in the world, but you're not responsible for what somebody else does or how they act. So you have to take responsibility for your reaction to things. And so quite often people won't hit a, mm, a point of change. It's either a full breakdown or they hit a wall, adrenal fatigue, that was one of mine, was adrenal fatigue, to realize that I am the common denominator. I am the one there in every situation in my life. Not everybody else is always there, so I can't blame somebody external. I need to take responsibility for myself. And when you're willing to take that responsibility, and when you're willing to do the work that is required, the guidance that somebody else is giving you only to reflect within you what you need to work on and help pull that out of you and show it to you in a different way, 
from another perspective. And then you can start to reflect and you learn to do this yourself. And then you start to question. It's all about questioning things. It's all, all about not taking anything for fact unless you feel it's for fact in your body. And it's about that connection between mind, body, and spirit because most of us are operating from only our mind and not our body. And the body has so much to tell us. So I always say, but how does that make you feel? And we're cut off from our feelings as kids. We're not meant to feel anymore. We're meant to be a good robot in society <laughs> or a good worker bee, whatever you want to call it, part of the hive. And when you start to stand outside of that, you need to have some new tools so that you can stand really strong in your own power despite the naysayers and, and what others might say. Mm -hmm. And coming back to the topic, uh, rising collective uh, consciousness and vibration. Um, so what would you say about like reading, you know, things that are around us that not necessarily mine, but affect our life and reacting to that, like how we can actually rise the collective consciousness? Absolutely. So I was speaking about this earlier in a video and whether it's politics or whether it's war, when you put your attention there and say, I don't like this, I don't want this, you've now given it energy. Your energy is your commodity. It is your currency. And so when you give it away that way and you're like, oh, I don't like that, I'm gonna go protest and I'm gonna go fight it. Now you're giving your energy to that which you don't like. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're giving your power away. So what you want to do is keep your energy. Ah, interesting that's happening. Why don't I focus on peace in that area? And there's many group meditations working on this stuff and peace for humanity right now. And by working on a collective vibration that's sitting up higher, we affect the entire consciousness. And that's a much more elevated way of looking at it and realizing that when we all do that and we all stand up and we all say no more, um, that, it, that it will fully shift. And we're getting really close to this, somewhat of a tipping point around some of it. But then also remembering at the same time, as you do this and you raise your own um, vibration and your own frequency, you're really creating your own reality. So therefore, when you shift, everything you would see externally will start to shift as well. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. I'm pretty sure everybody uh, heard that many times mm -hmm. and it's scary. It's scary. Mm. How to work with this scariness? How to trust? <laughs> How to trust yourself? Yeah. Mm. Ah, I would say meditation, definitely. And asking those questions. Why don't I trust this? Where does this, where does this break in trust within myself come from? And it generally will stem from childhood. There will generally be something, a trigger moment, a, an experience that we were told, you know, this is the way it is, or suck it up buttercup, or kids are meant to be seen and not heard, that you start to just lock things down. Oh, I'm gonna get in trouble for that. I won't get rewarded for that. And then we, we suppress these emotions, right? And so they will come up when there was a similar situation arising. And so depending on where you were raised and what was going on in your country, that may be one of those trigger points, right? Ah, oh, I know this happened in my country and now it's happening everywhere. Well, that's a good trigger point to look at and go, ah, oh. but as I observe this from my position now in life, back towards when I was a child from an observer, not to relive it, but to observe it and go, I didn't know better then. And I know better now. And that's okay. It's okay that we felt that way then, but I'm much stronger now. We've made it this far. And if I want to put my energy towards what I do want, then I need to make a different decision around this. Because again, by giving it away, you're just giving your power away. There's this thing called Loosh, which comes out of Monsters, Inc. I don't know if you know that movie. It's a kid's movie about mm -hmm. these monsters that go into kids' bedrooms and scare them to steal the scare. And that is how their whole um, town runs, is on this energy from these kids screaming. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, <laughs> this is very similar. So it's like taking your Loosh, which is your energy, and now it's being used to prop that story up. It's giving it more energy. It's the more people that focus on that, the more energy that is given. So it's about trying to find like-minded people to help support you in your mission and in your desire so that you are surrounded by people in a similar vibration versus a lower vibration. Mm -hmm. And talking about like-minded people, adventures for connection, a community that you're building, what 
means for you adventures and what means connection? Yeah, so I'm um, a big believer in movement, movement for shifting energy, movement for play, because I believe we should all be playing full time, full out. Uh, because when we go on an adventure like this for Mexico, you're creating your life. So instead of consuming it, so you're not on your regular routine, you're doing something different, you're stepping into a new space to create something different. So like the sweat lodge we went to the other day, it was quite beautiful, it was a new experience, we were creating something new, and I stepped in with my full power, so to speak, right? To give my voice, to share my energy within that small confined space so that everyone may be uplifted within the space at that time. And so we do that on the adventures. We uh, give people space to integrate, but also to push them past their comfort zone. Or for in Egypt, for example, Egypt is a very dense, tight energy because the people are quite suppressed there. And so that had a lot of people reacting while we were there. And we would sit with them and have a discussion about it. So what can you control and what can you do? What can you do in your own home to make you feel better about what's going on here? And just giving another perspective on it. So um, the adventure is always in exploration, whether it's within, because you can go on an adventure within yourself. I believe that we are, we have the entire universe within us and that you could, there's lots of exploring to do. All your dreams are within you that you're having that come up and you can, you can create from your dreams. And then that connection point is connecting around the table, connecting in circles. We do a lot of circles. I'm not a big believer in I'm on stage and I'm speaking down to you because to me that's um, part of the programming is to come down and look upon people and speak to them. But it's to create a circle so we're all equals and we're all teaching each other. And when one person says something, oh, this person over here goes, oh, that really resonated. So now we're teaching each other. We're all equals in this. Nobody is higher or better than anyone else. We're just at different stages in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your vision of a perfect world? If you could change everything you want, how it will look like? Yeah, so if everything could be manifested instantly and everything was easy, we would have no contrast. I have a feeling we would get bored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's only in that contrast, only in that duality of what we see, and that's what this planet is for, in my opinion. And I would love to see all the children taken care of, no need for everyone fed, everyone to have water, everyone to be able to play and do arts and crafts and explore. And instead of using money as the currency, we use our energy and we can barter and trade so that somebody outside of us is not controlling how we operate because we need money to pay rent, we need money to pay for food. So we want to claim that back and go, no, we can just barter, we don't need your... The government was never meant to, to govern us, it was meant to work for us and it's, it's twisted and it's become this other way. So to flip that back over, and I also actually believe it's gonna go back to more um, of like a clan mother. And so there will be areas and there will be a council that sits in a circle. It will not be one person on a stage that is being uh, puppeted by many other people here based on how much money they have, what they'd like to see to happen in the world. And so it'll become much more as a human circle than, than any sort of top-down structure anymore. That would be my wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is your like top one um, activity or exercise um, during the moments that are very hard or for someone who's going through some, um, some difficulties or challenges, maybe they are already ongoing for a couple of days and can't like see the light in the tunnel or maybe just happen instantly, what will be the, your best kind of like call to action to, to shift the energy and to rewrite? The first thing I'll do is depending on if I'm in a crowd, I will tend to just recede to myself. So try and find some space for me so I'm not being affected by the other energies. And take a few really deep breaths because we have more hairs on the bottom of our lungs than we do on the top. And our vagus nerve is attached to that so we can calm our nerves and calm our energy by taking a few really deep belly breaths. And when you release out of the mouth, you're releasing any negativity, any it's more of a cleansing breath. And then also you can do tapping. So tapping on your face, tapping on your chest, 
to bring your awareness into your body so that you are not so focused on what's going on in the mind. So now if I'm tapping my chest, I'm focusing more on where I'm tapping. You can tap on your hands, on the side of your hand, on the outside side of your palm, and you can tap there and go, ah, oh, I got this. Everything's gonna be okay. I know this feeling, I've had it before, and it always works out for me. So giving yourself some affirmations that will help to get you through, depending on the situation. Mm -hmm. I have a following question because I know all these techniques and I ca I'm catching myself sometimes when this uh, flood of you know hormones of stress like going through my body I'm just forgetting all this tapping all this breaths and like and what, what can be a, something that can like break through this <laughs> yeah absolutely we were actually discussing this last night on the call sticking your hand in cold water <laughs> literally ice water getting outside for a walk, okay. like, okay, you know what? I'm in my head, I know this game, I've been here before, I'm gonna go for a walk and move mm -hmm. the energy. Because quite often as you move the energy, you start moving your body, you're shifting the energy within the body. And that can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be my top two tips. Cold shower will do wonders as well, if you can handle it. Yeah. You go <laughs> stick yourself in a cold shower, you'll shift your energy in an instant. <laughs> Um, if you could advise to people one thing that they can start doing after listening to this uh, that can change their life, their health, their emotional state, what would it be? It would be to realize that you are not the one thinking, you are not the one speaking, you are the one observing that. You are an energy being. You, we're moving, our cells are constantly moving. So if energy can't be created or destroyed, then we're not just these bodies, we're not just this human person. We're a soul having a human experience because we come into this body at birth to have this experience, forgotten everything we know. And so the more people can realize that their subconscious is programmed from the ages one to seven, and that by realizing their computer is like a CPU, or their brain is like a CPU computer, it's running the subconscious programming. That by shifting and doing more affirmations, realizing that your thoughts are not facts, that you can dismiss them. And becoming that observer and almost sitting back and observing everything, being more quiet, don't react, wait and respond. Because when you wait, you start to observe differently and you're like, oh, I see what's going on here. Because when you're reacting, you're, you're not listening to hear, you're listening to respond. And so it's about pulling your energy back to yourself and getting a little quieter. That would be my biggest tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like bite your tongue if you have to, not to, to react to something. Mm, I'm not going to say anything right now, and bite your tongue. <laughs> um, so I have a question because I feel like uh, I, I, I have this kind of like stepping backwards a little bit thing. And some of my friends are getting angry for me that I have a poker face and I'm like not responding to day triggers. They're, for example, like doing some drama and I'm just like, okay okay can i come back to you in a couple of days or something and they are getting even more furious of because course. i'm like how how to like manage that with people who are not really like um appreciating this <laughs> yeah so uh, first of all i want to congratulate you because <laughs> high five wonderful <laughs> work <laughs> because that is the gift right to not to not be reacting because misery loves company if I'm gonna have a shit storm going and I'm gonna raise my voice and I'm gonna get angry, I want everyone to be like me. Mm -hmm. You want you want camaraderie. So when you're the one quiet, now, you, now you're being the one singled out. And you just have to say, it's my right to respond versus react to how you're behaving right now and I need some time to think about my feelings on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a gift to be able to not be responsive. Now, it's not to say not to be spontaneous. There's a big difference between the two, but that reactiveness that people expect from you. Um, when you shift, they shift, and I've spun so many people out of my life, so to speak, they leave because they don't like my frequency anymore. And that happens. And then once somebody leaves, somebody new comes in that's vibrating at your frequency. And then you find new people. And then you up-level more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree on that, but we are like so attached to our past, as you said, like the childhood, mm -hmm. the, the friends that we have from childhoods, and that creates kind of safety, right? Because we know them for a long time, and we feel that if something is lasting, like relationship, right? Like, oh, if it's lasting, it creates safety, even 
when it's toxic, right? And how we can work to kind of like understand that, to like let go of things that we should let go and like not turning back because I feel like this is very hard for many people who are hold on to this things oh because I'm for so long with this what job, it, yeah. with this partner, with this friend, you know, like they my best friends, even they, you know, fuck up and mess up many times. Right, right. <laughs> so what are you really afraid of? Um I guess I'm a loneliness, ah. right? Like being alone, even mm -hmm. though we can never be alone, but it's like this feeling like, oh, I'm not good enough. Now no one's going to be liking me anymore. Like I'm going to be alone till the end of my life. Or I'm never going to find a better friend or a better partner or whatever, or a better job, right? But it's only once you let go do you realize that you have everything you need within you. You will never be alone. You are never lonely. I can sit for hours by myself, quite content to on the beach. I'm like, it's like I need that space to, so I can hear my soul, right? So when we're constantly allowing ourselves to be ping-ponged around by others so that we're not able to focus on self and to be able to get quiet and go within, then we're giving our power away still. So, yeah, you got to get over that fear of you're never alone. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're not married to your friends. Yeah. And marriage doesn't last forever anyway, most of the time. <laughs> I think it all comes back to what she said at the beginning, that yeah. all the powers are within us, but we... We forget. Yeah, we forget and we don't really feel them. And it's also scary to yeah. know that we have all these powers because then the responsibility is ah, on us. Ah, there we you go. You can't blame anyone, right? Right? You can't blame anyone. <laughs> you can only blame yourself. And therein lies the biggest and truest power you can do is become the best frickin' version of you ever so that nothing can cause you to waver. Mm -hmm. Nothing. All right, thank you. Anything that you want to add on? No, no. Okay. I just want to say thank you for having me on and I really look forward to you standing in your power. <laughs> fully. <laughs> and authentically. To this as well. Um, how people like can work with you, you do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you have yep. a group sessions. Yep. I think online courses coming up. Online courses coming up. Everything's always evolving and changing. That's the one constant life you can count on. It's change. Mm -hmm. It's being really comfortable in the unknown. Mm -hmm. And it's such a beautiful spot because I can't even plan three months out right now. Well, we got a couple events we're plugging in a little bit later, but for the most part, it's like, yeah, I can't say what's going to happen yet because I don't want to commit to something and create something when something better might come along. And so I always leave this space for flexibility because then flexibility is possibility. So we're online, we're on YouTube, we're on Rumble, I'm on TikTok, uh, Instagram and Facebook under my name, Tanya Powell and under Adventures for Connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we're recording this end of January. I'm going to be published February. People can still sign up for the summit coming up in the month yes. of March. Yes. Maybe you can tell a little bit more about that. Yeah, so we're bringing together some collective thought leaders around becoming the best version of you. And everything we just discussed in this podcast is like almost an outline for the mm -hmm. summit. So to draw people in, to get them to hear somebody else's frequency and somebody else's voice from another perspective that it might land differently for them because quite often you hear the same you can hear the same thing many times but it's that one time when you were more open and that frequency of that person hits you in a specific way that you actually hear it and it goes ah because you can't change anybody else's mind only they can change their own mind mm. yeah. yeah that's beautiful yeah Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Stop. Awesome. Thank you.